kids that I went to school with at USC that I know for a fact that should have been playing on Sundays, but ended up flunking out or, you know, getting kicked out of school because their grades wasn't right, the number would be, you wouldn't believe me. Because it's 80 kids a semester that comes in. I've seen at least 10 to 15 every year flunk out, go to JC or get kicked out of school because it was something that, I don't know if it was school that wasn't on their mind or they just didn't care. So for them to say that, like, I don't, I don't care who y'all think you are, how good at football you are. If you do not get the grades, you won't be at Ohio State. You will not go to Michigan, wherever you think you might be going. You'll be sitting over there with one of us playing video games, right? It ain't, I'm not knocking y'all and I ain't trying to tell you that, like, this is the truth, man. Like, when they say, can you be coachable? When somebody's asking can you be coachable, they ain't asking on the football field. They ask him when, when Miss Sally asks you, like, uh, what's your grades looking like? Or can you do this? Or if you ask him questions in class. I know for a lot of y'all sometimes, I know when I was in school, to be the smart kid in class was probably the nigga gonna laugh at you, <laughs> cracking jokes. But, bruh, them motherfuckers that I seen growing up like that, the Reggie Bushes, one of the guys I played football with, one of the most smart dudes I ever went to school with. He was one of them dudes that everybody would be in the class, like, do y'all got it all understood? Reggie be like, and they'd be like, Reggie didn't know that. He was laughing, but he was the one that got a 3.8 too. Them kids that was laughing, guess what? They in study hall, you gotta get their grades up at the end of the year. They don't even get to start the season off. I don't know how I would feel knowing that I don't get to play the first two games of the season. That was one thing I grew up, my parents always instilled in me, get your ass to school, take care of them grades. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even gotta be the smartest dude. All you gotta do is go to class and ask these teachers, is there anything else you can do? What can I do? Please help me, and they're going to help you. None of these teachers are, you can't tell me that they want to see you fail. Like, that's cool. They help, they're here to help y'all work, right? Um, so school is number one. I don't, I can't stress that more than anything. You get to the next level, you don't know how to, if you can't do your math book here, when they give you this, if y'all think this, this pass protection is something, dog, y'all have no idea. When you get to the next level, it's a book this big. And they're gonna give you that book and they expect you to know that by the end of the week. So you got about a thousand plays and pass protections with the mic might come down to sandwich. You gotta know all this. And if you don't know it, guess who's gonna be in there? The guy behind you. So it's all the same shit. It's just school is the first step, but then this is gonna be the school when you get there. And if you don't know this, you damn sure ain't gonna play. To me, hard work is the next thing, right? Everybody in here say they want to be the next, you know, Jamar Chase or I don't know, Joe Cool, I don't know, Pac-Man Jones, whoever y'all idolize, Odell Beckham. Everybody in here say they want to be that next thing, but you know the difference between some of them and us and the normal kid is they working when everybody else is sleeping. You know what I'm saying? Or when your coach is out there and y'all tired as hell, you're like, damn, I want to end practice. Or the practice ain't going how you want it, y'all just, that's not how it goes. Like, bro, to be great at this, you gotta work when nobody's working, and you gotta work even harder when they think when they when you when you think they turn it up on y'all, and you're like, damn, this is rough, man. I got 90 degrees out here, I'm sick of this shit. I get it, I've been there. Nah, turn it up then and turn it up more, man. That's gonna make y'all so much more prepared for later on in the season. That fourth quarter drives when y'all want it. When you looking at your homeboy and they like, bro, you got 26 counter, and you looking at the big boy, you got me. You know what I'm saying? That's where that come in. 
Like, you got me? Can I, can I count on each one of y'all to do y'all's job? That's what that comes down to, bro. Other things, bro. I mean, that hard work shit is so real, bro. That it'll take you so far in life that you'll never understand, bro. It'll take you way further. Cooper Cup. Y'all think Cooper Cup was a four star, one star, no stars? He ended up leading the NFL in every major statistical category. But do you think that came from just being a white boy that don't know how to work? Or he was in there seeing everybody telling him what he wasn't going to do. And he started working harder, right? So hard work, man. Um, it'll take you so far in life, dog. Uh, um, I got, y'all can ask me questions or whatever. You know, I ain't here. I'm not going to be up here to preach to y'all. I remember being y'all's age and when somebody came in, some of y'all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I hear what he's saying, but shit, I went to school. I had to play with Reggie Bush. I was a backup, y'all. But in my state, like, when I played against with Reggie Bush and I walked in, he was a five-star, the number one running back in the nation. I was a four-star, like maybe 36, right? There was no way I was supposed to be playing there. But if y'all look at our stats and what, what went on, I'm a kid from Colorado. He's a kid from L.A. That's his backyard. But if you look at it, you would never know that I was a five-star or not a five-star. Because once I went there and I see what type of dude he was and how bad he wanted it, he, he something clicked with me. Like, there was no way I was going to let nobody else outdo me. I don't give a damn from Michigan, t Texas, or whatever, because I know y'all hear about this. But when you get in there, bro, something has to change and click with y'all. You know what I mean? And sometimes, coach, they can bring it out of y'all, but it's like, what do y'all want out of this? Some of y'all might want to just go to the NFL, get some of that money, and be like, oh, I made it. Some of y'all might do it. But I can honestly tell y'all, by statistics, maybe one of y'all might make it. How does that sound? I'm not telling you ain't gonna make it. I'm telling you by statistics, maybe one of y'all might go to the NFL in. But the thing is, y'all can change the statistics based on what y'all want out of this. Like, if you just want money, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? If you want your name to ring bells. If you want to be up here one day and tell it, oh, I led the nation in school and I got back-to-back -back national championships. I outrushed Reggie Bush. You can do all that, but it depends on what y'all want. Like, you got to look at yourself in the mirror one day, write down something, and you write down your goals, and you look at that shit every single day and make sure that you ain't cheating yourself. Because that's the main thing. A lot of us cheat ourselves, man. You think you're really working hard. You think you're putting all the work in. Oh, I did enough. It's not enough, man. You're cheating yourself. You know what I'm saying? I know because I got to the NFL. Thought I was the shit. Playing six years, thousand yards. I ain't working out like that. The next year, I ruptured my Achilles, right? And I'm like, man, I'm good enough to go back to the league. <laughs> Let me tell y'all one fucking shit. I haven't been called back to the league since I ruptured my Achilles. Ain't no calls. There ain't nobody hollering, looking for you. None of that. And I can tell you, I just had a thousand yards the year before. So one thing you can never fool is fool yourselves, man. Always be honest with yourselves, man, and just want the best for you, man. I really ain't got nothing else to say, but if y'all got any questions, I'll definitely take them or, you know, answer what I can for y'all. But, man, never cheat yourselves, man, for real. If that's the person you look in the mirror, you can never lie to. We'll see you up there. What was the hardest thing you transitioned from high school to college? Um, that I, you ain't the only guy. See, in high school, like, when you get scholarships and like you get a scholarship to you know USC from Colorado, I was the guy in my state. You know everybody's the guy. When you get to USC or Michigan, you got to think there's 30 kids that's checking in that are five stars just like you. You know what I'm saying? And they want it just as bad as you. Some of them kids ain't got no family. Some of them kids ain't never had nothing in their life. And some of us, man, they just hand you shit. So then when you get there, these kids like you gonna see a difference. That's what it is. Some of them kids ain't never had nothing, and they want everything you got. That's the difference. Y'all good? Any more questions? So I, I want to ask everybody here, um, has anybody thought about your life outside of sports? Like, is sports your number one thing because it's the only thing that you feel like you got? Is that the only thing that you're prioritized to do? Does anybody got an idea of what they want to be outside of sports? Uh, once I retire from that, they all want to be a uh, sport broadcast, like talking through the game. Yeah. I'm going through, I just went through a media boot camp right now for the NFL. And that's good that you know that now because you can start that now. There's things 
that you can start now to set that up. So if you do walk away, that that'd be something that you can walk into the sunset with. But that's good that you, it's, that's a good that you have a plan B or a plan A, B, or so. Like something to business, something to bring along, like you can get them all clothes, something to do, something like that. Do you know the factors that come with business? So this is, this is another reason that we're, that we're here, right? I know you see us with these shirts. I know it's say balling on the budget. It's specifically because our goal is to teach all student athletes of all ages about financial literacy. I can tell you right now, all of y'all got six hours in school. Y'all been going to the school for God knows how long. And I guarantee you, none of you know what credit is, do you? But you're gonna have to know. I because of clean. <laughs> listen, some of you, and this is crazy. This is crazy, right? Because we're speaking real shit. Like, some of y'all, I'm sure some of y'all, this is this is so real that some of y'all going right into this next year, and y'all gonna have to learn all about this credit. Credit's gonna get your apartment. Credit's gonna get your cell phone. Credit gets everything that you want, and if you don't have it, you don't get it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's that's what's real about it. Yeah. See, mommy ain't always gonna let you put it on her account, man. One day she's gonna say, hey, take your card down there, open up your own account, and you're gonna do it. And you're like, oh, I have a 530. And they're gonna be like, hey, yeah, well, give us $1,000, man, and we'll give you a cell phone. And you're like, ah. That's how it works. Every single one of y'all are born millionaires. You just have to figure out how to bring that out, right? Just like playing on the field. To get on the field, you gotta earn your coach's trust. You got to do the same thing with financial institutions. The same thing with financial institutions. It's not about how much can you can't take forty thousand dollars to a car dealership and buy a car. It just don't work that way. One, you're gonna get looked at by the FBI. Where did you get this money at? X, Y, Z. That's not how you do it. What you want to do is you want to establish credit and build trust. But at, before you guys do any of that, we know right now you got a thing out called NIL. Everybody familiar with NIL, right? Name, image, likeness. So what's very important about NIL is it's exactly what it sounds like. You gotta keep your name clean. What does that mean? I can't be on Instagram with pictures of guns or this, this, and that, or I don't even wanna be associated with a friend that's having pictures of guns and I'm just even getting caught up in that picture because for one, that can mess with your money, right? You say you wanna go to the NFL, the real reason y'all wanna go to the NFL is the love of the game somewhat, but you wanna get paid, right? Everybody here want to get paid. So you got to start now with being able to build an image of yourself to where you do not mess your money up. Name, image, likeness. It's very important that you guys are being the best individuals you can be. When it comes to hard work, when it comes to competition, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. Y'all done seen it all. Y'all done did it all. Y'all back-to-back state champions, man. I went to this school, I graduated in 2000. I seen some pretty damn good teams. Pretty damn good teams that could have potentially competed with y'all. But the thing that y'all, that stood out with y'all, man, from watching y'all, I ain't gonna lie. Y'all heart, man. I watched that Cavs Tech game, bro. I'm in the bed with my wife. My wife went to Cavs Tech, I went to Belleville, so she on the other side, we ain't even talking. You know what I'm saying? And how y'all started off that game, balling. Got down and faced adversity. Went in the overtime and then said, fuck it, I'm going for two. We ain't we tired, it's cold outside. We ain't about to do none of this. We going for two, let's make this shit happen. That was the hardest game of the season, am I right? The state championship, the game before the state championship has always seemed to be the hardest. For some reason they keep setting us up in divisions where we play the hardest team before, I feel like, what was that, the year before that? Who did y'all play in the state championship? Was it Davidson? Rochester. Rochester, Rochester, right? Bro, y'all got the heart, y'all got the skill, y'all got the wheel. With y'all mindset, you can do anything, but I want y'all to think beyond sports. I swear I want y'all to think beyond sports. Balling on a budget, we created a financial literacy program for students. We're gonna provide you guys with this program, okay? Once it's completed. This program, it explains Lizelle's story. It explains the financial ups and downs that you can specifically face. When you guys get to college, y'all on your own. You on your own, your mom and dad really don't gotta do nothing for you. 
You on your own. And again, some of you here may be getting offered NIL deals. I'm pretty sure you have back to back state championships. Somebody is. If you are, did anybody not open up a bank account? No? So if I gave you, Bryce, if I gave you a million dollars right now, who would you do with? Hold on, hold on, hold on. If I gave you a million dollars right now, after taxes, how much money do you think you have? Because you thought you had a million dollars to show, but that's really not, they, they tell you that, that's a fluke. That's the biggest fluke about when they say you got a million dollars. How much do y'all think y'all got after that? Okay, so how does that work? So you see how that works? You had a million, now you walking in there with $600,000. So 400 gone in the wind, Uncle Sam. So right, so now you gotta go to get your, so now you go in with that million, what kind of car you would, would you like to drive? No, for real talk. It, 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 it ain't real talk. Talk. what you want to drive. You keep it real. A lot of people ain't gonna talk to y'all like this. That's what I need to know. Sure. You, you, okay, we got the taxes down. You got six hundred k. What car are you about to go with? You from? We from the turf. We need. You know, I look like Ferraris, Corvettes, Escalades, Hellcats. The what? The Hellcat, okay, you looking, okay, that's, you gonna buy it? Are you gonna buy it? Are you gonna rent, are you gonna um, lease it? You got credit? <laughs> but see what I'm saying? So now that's where it messes up, and I, I can't really do that, my might as well buy it. So the Hellcat with the wheels and the music and all, that's 140. So now six, oh, we have 460. You ain't got a crib yet. You gotta look out for mom. Damn, mom. I oh, hold on, grandma calling me. My sister over here, she just got a flat tire. She got four kids. Yeah. I'm trying to tell y'all. So even when y'all think y'all, your millionaire, the athletes out there that got the thing, when you think they're super rich, or sometimes you'll see some of these athletes and you'll be like, dang, well, they were so rich when they were playing. It was like, yeah, that was the lifestyle while you're playing. What he's telling you is about setting up after that. Set that lifestyle up so you know that you can maintain or you got something going on regardless. That's where it come in. That's why the million dollars really ain't the NIL. And if I didn't tell you this now and you didn't think about that, you probably get that money and hey, go back to the hood, go strip clubs, you hang with your pocket. Next thing you know, you got like 250. But I need, man, hold on, I gotta go to the drip. Gucci on it. I gotta oh, you get, gotta make that. Man, yeah, man I gotta understand. have that Gucci yeah, on. I, I gotta be nice. I got to get that. Oh, damn, I need my ice. I need the ice. Man, I got 50,000 yeah. left. Yeah, shorty's sure gonna be there. I gotta get the booze. I don't want nobody seeing us sitting jail. I'm 25 grand now. Out of a million dollars. That quick, and I've seen it happen. I swear to God, y'all. Hey, because we'll everybody thinks the million dollars, no, that million dollars ain't paying. Now, if you got credit, about that financial literacy. If you really are in tune with what you're doing, you know that you can borrow money from other people without using your money all the time. It helps you through the game, you know what I'm saying? But that's the exact reason why we're here, to let y'all know because, bro, yes, you, while you're playing football, it look like the greatest life in the world, but as soon as them checks stop, man, people sell their jewelry, they get that Hellcat back up, and it's, it goes back to normal life. And let me tell you, let me show you the flip side of that. You got a million dollars in IL deal. Still got to pay for on time. Yeah. Right. You want a health care, right? Yeah. You got a good credit score. You got self good credit score. Now you're not paying out running 140 cash. Now you may be putting down 5,000 cash. Yes, See what yeah. I'm saying? Now you finance the vehicle because really you don't want to buy a vehicle because in two years, what? Shit change, right? It's like you buy an outfit today. That shit ain't going to be in style two weeks later, right? You're going to want something different. So now you finance the vehicle. 5,000, car note may be about 2,000. All right, bam, you're able to pay that off slowly but surely. But guess what you're doing with credit? With credit, you're using other people's money. That's the name of the game. We see a lot of these rich people out here. It's, it's not that they got a bunch of cash. It's that they built their trust up with so many different financial institutions that they can get whatever they want because they've shown that they've been able to pay any amount of money that they've been given, right? Like if they got a loan for 500,000, and they, and, they, and they loaned over 2500 for two years straight, they never missed a payment. So now when you go back to the bank and say, damn, we got 500 well, no, I need a million. You think they gonna say no? No, they gonna say yeah. Right now, this car right here, this car got $25,000 on it. It's just one. You got 10 of these, have a quarter million. 
<laughs> you got 10 of these have a quarter million. I'm speaking real shit. You got 10 of these have a quarter million, and guess what can happen? Say you got that, that one million, that one million, four hundred thousand, you put in taxes, six hundred, you got in cash, everybody has to have you, whatever you buy, say you got half a million. But now you're using other people's money. So say something happened with this money where it's like, you know what, I can't keep up with the bills, I can't do XYZ. This money is insured. This money can get written off, and you can still keep that five hundred thousand. So now I can kind of play around and do the things that I want to do with being responsible and accountable, right? It's different than saying, shit, I'm keeping cash, 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 and the cash gets on the next thing you know, I ain't got it. And I'm here to tell y'all straight up, whoever you think your friends is, when it comes to money, they will disappear. When it comes to money, they will disappear. I don't care how tight you think you is. Family, cousin, family, family cousin, you can give you can give your uncle twenty five thousand a day, give your best friend twenty five thousand, and then you go broke the next day, and they hit for two hundred thousand, and they ain't gonna remember that they you didn't do that. They'll be a mess on a vacation with their family. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I had some money. I didn't get a hundred dollars. It's very okay. Bob is doing well. You'll never know somebody until you have money and they don't. That's the thing, man. So that's just realistic. I appreciate y'all's time, fellas, man, because I know y'all got a lot of shit to do. But man, again, never, never, ever lie to the man in that mirror, man, because that's the only person y'all can never bullcrap. You're going to have to go see him one day. And there's going to be a day where you go out and tell yourself, damn, I wasn't always honest with myself. I was bullcrapping a lot. You know what I'm saying? Our job here, man, like the reason we came to build that course is a lot of y'all know me, man. Like I'm, I graduated from Bill, though. My mom and dad graduated from Lil Mook is my son, he runs with me there. Like I got a lot of, you know, like love for the city and a school of Bill High School. But this is gonna eventually be more than just a football program, right? We're gonna instill, you know, uh, mental health consultation. Cause I know a lot of kids that face trauma. Um, a lot of you that know Lil Mook, one of his best friends just died, right? You know, when you're 19, 20 years old, man, you ain't used to seeing stuff like that. Right, and that's like his third friend who passed in the past year. So I don't care how hard you are, you know, or whatever, bro. Sometimes you gotta reach out. If you need to reach out and talk to somebody, y'all need to reach out and talk to me. Y'all come through, get my number, and not talk to me, but that shit is real. You know what I'm saying? That shit's real, but we wanna bring financial literacy to y'all. We understand that you guys are, are great at what you do athletically, right? But just imagine if you can equip a new set of tools, right? Imagine if you could be smart enough to know how to establish your credit as early as 18 years old. If you could have these same conversations with your parents, and I can tell your parents their secret jewels that they can do to build you guys' credit score, so when you graduate from college, you don't gotta do nothing. You're ready to sign the drive, you can get your house, you can get your car, you can do everything you wanna do. But a lot of that stuff has to be passed down from generation to generation. And the last thing that I wanna talk about, um, it's not even really nothing I wanna talk about, I wanna talk about mentorship. Right. If you guys got youth kids, youth brothers, nephews, nieces, tell them about the things that, they, that they're they going to expect in high school. Right. Mentorship is not just about one day coming here to talk to college kids or, you know, you know, you talking to like everybody needs to help somebody. You know what I'm saying? That's a reach one, teach one now. But I ain't going to hold y'all up, man. I'm proud of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all back to back state champions. Y'all did something that the world's never seen. If you don't do nothing else for the rest of your life, which I'm not telling you don't do nothing else for your life, y'all boys' names is on the plaque forever, especially in the city of Florida, man. And I appreciate all of y'all time. Thanks.